on the rise. Lifestyle diseases such as high blood pressure, diabetes and heart disease have been found to be common in persons that are morbidly obese. The search for a healthier, leaner body has people considering weight loss surgery, which might be an option for an adult with a body mass index BMI of 40 or higher and at least one obesity related medical condition. To estimate your BMI, this is what you need to do. Divide your weight by the square of your height. Divide your weight by the square of your height. So if your BMI is 30 or higher, it falls within the obese range. We all have thin and overweight phases in our lives. I sought to find out more about weight loss surgery. Take a look. This is two years ago. Weighing almost 100 kgs, Bridget Nyabuto was obese. At this point, she knew that despite trying different weight loss regimens, that advice that obesity can be treated by simply eating less and exercising more, weight loss, especially in the obese population, was more complicated than that. Two years later, after undergoing a gastric sleeve surgery, which restricts food intake and leads to weight loss, this is Bridget, weighing 57 kgs. So my name is Bridget Nyabuto. I recently turned 30. I'm a medical doctor. I'm narrowing down to the oncology space. Yeah, so this is my journey. Sometime in 2018, when I was about to start work, I collapsed in town, CBD. And I remember waking up in the high dependency unit of a hospital and I was told I'd been in a diabetic coma for two days. I mean it, it, it hit me hard, it hit me fast. I was 25 then and at that point I was grossly overweight. I, I was weighing in at about 98.5 to 99.5 kilograms at 25. Then apart from that, my blood pressure was also off the charts. I decided to try gym. I, of course, I enrolled. I mean, I, it was quite a struggle. So that went on. Um, I continued with my diabetic medication. And then 2020 comes along, the era of COVID. At that point, I was working in a COVID unit. So um, I had my first brush with COVID. It was bad. It was bad. I I got on oxygen. I I just knew now it was either me or putting these sugars under control. I think that's when I decided to take action. So my doctor, we discussed. First of all, um, they look at if you've tried other options and if they're not forthcoming with results. And then next, of course, they have to assess whether you're in the right state to go through with the procedure. Then after that, you evaluated your cardiac status, like is your heart capable of handling it? So um, we settled for a partial gastrectomy. This is um, literally cutting off parts of your stomach and then um, suturing it back together. Yeah, so what this does, it in effect reduces your capacity to accommodate food. Well, the first few months, were, um, <laughs> they were something new. First of all, you have to adjust mentally. You have to tune yourself down to, oh, that is a plate of fries. I cannot finish that. So you find um, a scenario whereby your brain knows it ought to finish, your body, knows it won't finish it. Yeah, so what would happen if you force it down? It would come back up. You would vomit it right out. But you learn portion control. And then there was also the weight loss. Um, it was pretty rapid, you know, um, wardrobe overhauls and whatnot. And then people becoming concerned, you know, asking you a lot of interesting questions. And then there was um, the amazing bit where you wake up one day, you, you don't need your sugar meds, your blood pressure is optimized, you feel lighter, you're sleeping better, 
your bowel movements are more regular. Though there's the bit of adjusting your body, of course, will um, crave carbohydrates especially. The first one month you'll have a diet with carbohydrate restriction. So your body will crave. You might feel tired. Um, you might, this chronic fatigue, um, this thirst, yeah? But then with time it just goes, it fades when you learn how to handle it, yeah? And then um, what I found hardest was learning to sip slowly. You know the way you're thirsty and then you just run, grab the next glass of water and gulp it down? That will go. You will be more intentional about your eating and your drinking. I really have to prioritize what I eat. So for me, proteins, protein, like lean protein, normally takes the lion's share on my plate. And then you top it up with a bit of veggies, but then you have to be intentional, do at least six planned meals per day, space them out nicely. Yeah, that way again, you ensure you're not getting on the other side of the spectrum, malnutrition in terms of um, inadequate nutritional intake. Um, initially, I was 99.5 kilograms. Um, that was a BMI of about 30 for my height, which uh, that is way, way on the obese side. Yeah, then um, in about uh, three weeks when I checked, I'd actually dropped five. Yeah, then within the first month, um, I remember I dropped a total of 7.5 kgs. Then from there, I wound up losing an average of about five per month. Then um, a year later, my weight plateaued. Um, I rested at a 57.5. Yeah, and I've been around there. And something of note, I don't have any nutritional deficiencies. Um, I mean, um, the only boost I got was a B12 shot. I, I normally go for one every six months. It's because B12 absorption occurs in the stomach. Now, when you lose a big chunk of it, there's a possibility you might not be absorbing as much as the body needs. So that's the only extra thing, really. Ah, confidence was always there, even in the big body. But uh, let's be honest, it was a boost. Yeah, it was a boost. You, you feel better. Um, I don't know, in terms of attention being drawn to you, well, more eyes are thrown towards you, so mm, it's a plus. <laughs> yeah. After speaking to Bridget, I sought to find out more about sleeve gastrectomy from a medical expert. I'm headed to the theater room and I want to show you what happens inside here. Let's take a look. Dr. Wycliffe Kaisha, a surgeon, is in theater. He is doing a gastric sleeve surgery, which is done as a laparoscopic surgery with small incisions in the upper abdomen. So the one we observe today is what we call gastric sleeve is the most commonly done surgery around the world and the most recommended. However, there are others like bypass and many others that can be done. In this one, we shape the stomach. The stomach is a big balloon. You can imagine it can hold four to six liters of food. We shape it in such a way that we make it a tiny tube so that when you eat, you can't finish more than four to ten tablespoons of food. You get full. And the other bit we do, we remove the top of the stomach that we call the fundus, where a hormone that stimulates appetite called ghrelin is located. So now the stimulus of appetite is reduced and you also you eat less. You saw we release the stomach of its attachments, then using special devices we cut it because we are doing it by minimal access, so-called keyhole surgery or laparoscopic surgery. So use very uh, advanced instruments to cut a big chunk of the stomach, remove it, and then you remain with a small one so that you get full quickly. You try to retain about 20 to 25 percent of the stomach so that you can also eat and maintain nutrition for the body. Obviously, again, when you remove the stomach, there are certain aspects of function of the stomach that are affected. That's why we monitor these patients over time, like iron metabolism, like vitamin B12. They may need sup supplementations. The two main complications that surgeons fear for this operation is bleeding and the staple line leaking, basically the contents of, because you've cut the stomach and sealed it, where you've sealed if it's weak and the contents leak, they'll get infection and sepsis. So we do, it's, it's, we call it a leak test, just like a, 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 the normal bicycle in a tube where you soak it in water and push air in it to see if there's bubbling so that you are sure that the staple line is intact, there'll be no leak. Obviously bleeding we see with our eyes when you are operating. So it is to ensure that you succeed so that the following day when the patient 
and eat, the food stays in the stomach, doesn't leak outside. Because it leaks outside, they'll get severe infections and you probably may have to reoperate and something like that. What shocks many of them is how much food they were eating before. But once they have the surgery and then they take two to three tablespoons of food and they're okay, they're shocked at how much their stomach was holding before. The price of this surgery has really come down in the last four or five years. I can tell you for sure we'll spend about 1.3 million before. Now we brought packages as low as 550 to 600. And the reason is because of cooperation between the surgical team the industry players. You saw we used a lot of extensive uh, devices to operate. They cost a lot. They're not made around. They're imported. They're taxed. The companies uh, charge and the top level devices because you don't want an error in this surgery. And then hospitals have also come around and given patients packages. But this is not the only option. Bariatric surgery procedures include gastric bypass and the gastric balloon. Largely, the balloon is used as a temporary step measure to achieving what you want. Because basically they put a balloon, as literally it sounds, into the stomach, uh, make it big by putting in water, so that it occupies space in the stomach so that you can eat less. So it's like a sleeve, you eat less. The only thing is that the balloon must be removed after six months. The hope is that in that time, the brain has learned to demand less food. So it's trying to create a habit so you lose weight initially when the balloon is there, but it's expected you will have developed a habit so that you can eat less, then you can stay. But the problem over time, people regain. So we have a number of people, after the balloons have been removed, they come back for uh, weight loss surgery. However, there are a number of people, after using balloons, they are able to really maintain their weight over some time. Basically, they have trained their brain to, to work quite well. So also balloons are being fixed in, in a good number. And also, some people really have this morbid fear of surgery, so they choose a balloon. Although a balloon is still a surgical procedure such, but not to the extent of the, the sleeve, for example. Now, the bypass. The bypass, what is there, just like the sleeve, we make a small stomach so that you can eat less, but we shorten the amount of intestine available for absorption. You know, the small intestine is the one that picks nutrients from the uh, food and put it in the bloodstream. So usually you have about six to eight meters. So we shorten it and reconnect the stomach at two meters so that you have maybe four, four meters remaining. So you taking in less nutrients from what you are eating. So most of the things you eat, however much you eat, will pass through stool. That's how the, the bypass uh, works. So the only thing is that it gives you as good weight loss like the sleeve, as good, but it has more complication rates. And also, you need more supplementation because you are getting less nutrients, so you get more micronutrient deficiency. You need continuous uh, uh, vitamin supplementation, iron, uh, micronutrients like selenium, zinc, and those kind of things. But it, it, it's, a, it's something we discuss with the patients. Uh, some choose sleeve and some choose bypass. There are some patients who are not suitable for sleeve, for example. Maybe they have severe reflux and something like that. Bypass could also give you a little bit better relief of uh, things like hypertension and diabetes. But the world has seen that the difference is so minimal, yet the complications are a bit higher, so most of the world has gone towards uh, sleeve. But we still do bypass. I ask Dr. Kaisa whether bariatric surgery is a cosmetic or medical procedure. It is not cosmetic. It is not to make you look good. It is to help you avoid diseases that can affect your quality of life. You know, you, you also know how to balance the risks and the benefits. Because this surgery is also not without risk. So you're just coming for, for, for cosmetic purpose and there's no medical benefit, it's difficult to make a case, a case for it. Before you are considered for any weight loss surgery, you will undergo a complete physical as well as a psychological evaluation to determine whether you are ready to commit to a healthier lifestyle. We invite your comments. What are your thoughts? But most importantly, adopting a healthy lifestyle is the way to go. And...